Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here we are again, everybody's locked down, it's 8pm, the curfew's kicked in, you got your masks on, we're all, all in our respective houses and having a great time. People are signing in everywhere, look at Carol's joined in uh, already, good old, oh, good old Daniel's Daniel. calling us, good old, oh, how's that, eh? <laughs> We've even got a love heart already from somebody, we've only been in the air for like 30 seconds, so that's pretty cool. We go, um, so, yeah, it's all very good, very, very exciting, and uh, hopefully you're all uh, looking forward to a great night on the tube with us. Uh, before we get too excited, I've got to introduce my lads, uh, MBS and Jeffro. How are you tonight, boys? Most excellent, dude. <laughs> Cowabunga, dude. Jeffro's <laughs> papers. <laughs> Um, all right, so MPS, we're over to you, old son, because we're talking about the year. What year have we got, old son? And as good as my rhyme is, it'll never be as good as Jeffro's. <laughs> <laughs> but the year we're talking about was 2001, and no, not quite the Space Odyssey, but certainly had some space within it. Um, actually, looking at the references, there wasn't a lot that happened in 2001 that was of interest. Um, it was actually a very sort of quiet year. Certain things that did happen. Wikipedia hang on, was. Hang on, I'm going to catch off there. So, Jeffro, is this a legitimate one or what? Should you have a point? Is that correct or not? I have, I have no idea uh, what that one is. It's like sort of hugs and kisses, XOXOXO <laughs> with, a, with an N. <laughs> There, there you go. So, uh, so sorry, um, uh, Greg, uh, you've been lucked out. Jeffro said uh, no, so uh, you don't get the point. I, I bow to Greg's uh, extreme wisdom. Very good. NPS, sorry to cut you off, old son, but I wanted to put that up there. All right, go for it. All right. So, as I just mentioned, Wikipedia was launched in 2001. Um, and this would be a favourite for some of some of our friends, especially Daniel. George W. Bush was sworn in as president of the USA. Just think that he went down on snack food. Um, what went down uh, on a bush? No, not on a bush, it's on friendly. snack food. It's part of the Robin Williams uh, um, skit, which is very funny. Uh, the near Shoemaker spacecraft touches down on in the saddle region, uh, becoming the first space satellite to land on an asteroid. Uh, the Mir space station. Uh, falls into the Pacific Ocean or the South Pacific Ocean. Apple computer releases Mac OS X. It's long awaited uh, next gen operating system uh, with version 10 and goes on to be the second most used desktop operating system uh, there. Tokyo Disney Sea opens as, to the public. Um, How's this? Now, I, I need to do more research on this. This could be interesting. A piece called As Slow As Possible, composed by John Cage, begins. It will last 639 years, finishing in the year 20, 2640. So I think it's a piece of music that started and is going to be composed over that period of time. Um, that means the uh, crew of Discovery, uh, as in Star Trek Discovery in Season 3, they'll come across it. So uh, there you go. That'd be Probably a good will. episode. Oh, look, it's just been finished. <laughs> and then in two episodes' time, it'll be a bone of contention, I'm sure. Um, mm. uh, Charles Ingram, uh, not the chicken guy, but another Charles Ingram, wins a million pounds on who wants to be a millionaire in the UK. The prize was cancelled after it was revealed that he cheated his way through most of the questions. Yeah, do you know how he did it? Uh, I think it was a coughing... Yeah, cough. yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. somebody yeah. in the audience cough when he was reading them out and, they'd go, <coughs> and that, that's when they knew it was the right answer. Yeah. So then... Someone watched too many episodes of Get Smart with the coughing code, you know. <coughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, that'd be funny. These days you can walk around the walk around Bunnings, if you can get into Bunnings, coughing your guts up. People say, Jesus Christ, he's got COVID. He's like, no, no, it's okay. He's coughing out a code, so it's all good, you know, in between <laughs> doing this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no more than September 11 occurred. No. Um Deep Space One, no, not DS9. Deep Space One flies within 2,200 kilometres of Comet Borelli. Uh, 
George W. Uh, announces the establishment of Homeland Security. NASA's Galileo spacecraft passes within 180 kilometers of Jupiter's moon. Uh, Jupiter's moon low. It's IO, probably. Is it low or IO? Uh, what, I don't low. know. It's a, it's a one and a zero. It's binary as far as I'm concerned. How low can you go? Yeah, good on you. Yeah. Um, later on in that year, the iPod is first introduced by Apple. Microsoft releases Windows XP, everyone's favourite. It was for me. Uh, yeah. And in December of that year, the Leaning Tower of Pisa reopens after 11 years and $27 million spent to fortify it without fixing its famous lean, which we obviously know was fixed in Superman 3 and then unfixed in Superman 3. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as that is in terms of events, which were positive, that's about it, really. What, Jeff? Um, it's just raining cats and dogs where I am at the moment, so uh, I don't know if you can hear that. No. no that that's just, oh, that's all right then. Very good. MPS, anything else? Uh, as for what happened in the year, no, that's it, really. It's a very short yeah, one. Yep, yeah, so for me uh, in the UK news, uh, Donald Campbell, the, the, the speed freak uh, who loved to challenge uh, how fast he could go, uh, his body was recovered uh, in a lake 34 years after he died. So he was on a... Uh, um, uh, land water speed record and they found the boat but they never found the uh, the body they looked for it for two weeks and uh, as i said it was not until 34 years later in 2001 that they finally uh, found him hmm. in um also in the news uh one million children in over 3,000 schools participated in an experiment to discover if, if it's possible to create an earthquake by jumping up and down True. I, I didn't look to see whether it actually uh, it succeeded or not, but th that's what they did. They jumped off chairs and, and it's like, let's, that's a scientific experiment. So, yeah. yeah. Um, we also saw um, the government uh, build a $3 million uh, fountain in uh, memorial to uh, Princess Di. And um, Note that she died in 1997, and it took them until 2001 to sort of uh, come up with the uh, the goods. So uh, I guess they took four years to sort of uh, mourn over uh, that before they made that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we also saw the Spice Girls um, unofficially break up after Mel C uh, exited the band, uh, although they never said that they split up. I mean, essentially, they didn't do anything for uh, a decade or more after that. Uh, Television-wise, it was a really good year because movies really sucked. I mean, we only saw Harry Potter and that was it. But on the TV front, uh, there was a show. This would have been interesting to see. It was called Inch Lost Island. And this is where volunteers attend a castaway-style island and the goal is to collectively lose weight. How good is that? <laughs> there you go. Very good. Not really. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> if you... If you uh, remember game shows from the uh, the 2000s, we had an Australian version of, of this, uh, and this was the year The Mole uh, began uh, on television. Uh, here's a weird one. I don't even remember this one. Uh, Bill and Ben returned to television in a CGI stop-motion um, uh, series. So I must have to look that up on, um, on YouTube, but uh, Bill and Ben. Uh, also in the animated side of things, Mr Bean, the animated series, uh, kicked off. We also saw this was the year for Who Wants to Be a Me and Air. So uh, lock this one in Eddie because it won a Queen's Award uh, for uh, uh, Enterprise and it was also franchised in over 60 countries. So uh, crikey, that's all I can say. So uh, that that was Who Wants to Be a Me and Air was red hot for, for a moment. So uh, uh, we also saw... Uh, actors from the uh, Australian soap Home and Away go over to um, the UK because the uh, the UK uh, started to broadcast uh, Home and Away and uh, they filmed episodes and uh, special guests for those episodes were Atomic Kitten. Oh, All right, no, stop, okay. stop, stop there for a sec. This is just worth putting up there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's good. Oh, I'll pay that one. 
Sorry, Jeff, I keep going. Yeah, so we also saw this was the year that um, The Office debuted on uh, BBC. And um, there was also a, um, uh, a year that uh, A Clockwork Orange actually was uh, broadcast on uh, Skybox Cinema. So Clockwork Orange famously was uh, pulled from uh, ever being shown in the, uh, the UK because uh, when it came out in the cinemas back in 73, I tend to think it was, uh, the the papers and such were saying, oh, this movie is provoking violence and people are doing copycat things. And essentially Kubrick said, all right, well, if that's the case, if that's how you feel, you don't get to see it. And... Um, so effectively, after all that time, it finally got a um, uh, a release on um, on television, which would have been interesting. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the TV news. And in terms of uh, births, basically bugger all. But deaths, uh, we'll celebrate the deaths of Harry Seacombe, Douglas Adams, Joan Sims, Fred Hoyle, George Harrison, Delia Derbyshire. And Mary Whitehouse, a couple of Doctor Who related ones there at the end. So that's that's my news. Very good. So in terms of uh, films, uh, yeah, the reason why Clockwork Orange was actually allowed to get released is because Stanley Kubrick passed away either this year or the year prior, whichever else, which then links into one of the films I was going to bring up, uh, AI, Artificial Intelligence, which was uh, going to be a Kubrick production, Kubrick and Spielberg together. Uh, and, of course, in the end, Steven Spielberg made it himself with uh, Haley Joel Osment. And there's a lot of Kubrickisms within the film. Uh, if you really look for it, you can clearly see he's influenced the whole way through, even though Kubrick had already passed away at that point. So uh, that came out in 2001. That's a bit of a uh, bit of hard going if you're uh, into films like that, is it with um, the whole thing of producing a kid who then is a robot and then becomes a real kid and all this sort of stuff. He wants to be a real boy and all this sort of business. It's uh, yeah, not the easiest movie in the world to watch. So uh, there you go. Um, one that did come out in 2001 uh, is Ghosts of Mars. Uh, now, you know, a lot of people are John Carpenter fans. And unfortunately, this was not exactly one of the pieces of work. And apparently he said it was meant to have been a tongue-in-cheek, uh, silly sort of film. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously. But, of course, people did take it seriously. And as a result, it absolutely got shredded in the uh, in the, in the in the reviews. And for that reason, Car uh, Carpenter left Hollywood for like nine years. He just said he's, he's out of town. Uh, it, was, it was such a bad... Um, uh, sort of like response, and of course, it was a very violent movie and definitely not very enjoyable. So, yeah, how it's funny how that works how a filmmaker intends a film to be interpreted one way, and the reviewers and the audience interpret it something completely different. And you sort of wonder, well, how is that even possible? And he said that like the, the name should have been enough Ghosts of Mars. I mean, that's not even a real name. So, anyway, um, one of the big surprise movies, uh, of 20, 2001, which was sort of like a uh, a sign of things to come, Farm Final Fantasy, The Spirits Within. First all CG uh, movie trying to depict um, uh, real life uh, imagery with uh, the humans and, and the people and the environments and all the rest of it. And it was really cutting edge for the time, even though when you look at it now, it can clearly looks very, very digital. But they're trying to replicate people, um, absolutely photorealistic. And look, I thought Final Fantasy was a great movie. The problem was mm. because it had um, it's like a Japanese game background. A lot of people got a whole loss with the Gaia thing. You know, the Earth has a... Uh, a spirit and a soul and all this sort of business. And I thought, had they just stuck with just blowing the crap out of everything, out of bad guys and good guys, it would probably would have been far more successful. But in the end, the film um, drove the studio bankrupt, so they lost that much money on it. But uh, anyway, but the games continued on, so they still produce Final Fantasy games. So uh, there you go. Um, Planet of the Apes, the old Tim Burton uh, reimagining, reboot, re-this, re-that, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, he did his own version back in 2001. Worked for some, didn't work for others. Uh, if anything, maybe the makeup work was probably one of its best things. Uh, the character of General Thade um, by Tim Roth, absolutely fantastic makeup for him. Um, but they broke like one of the cardinal rules from the original series by having the humans being able to speak. And I think a lot of people thought, no, that's not how it's meant to be. They're meant to be mute, and there's a reason why they're mute. So, but anyway, it is what it is. And uh, the film came and went, and um, had this fantastic twist ending at, at the end of the story when uh, I forgot the name, the actor. He gets back down to Earth in Washington and the whole world is taken over by apes, even though they're still in a contemporary society. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, and they did that just purely for the fun of it. They said, oh, it doesn't mean anything. We'll just do it. It's just to spin the audience's mind out. And that's just how it was. No explanation whatsoever as to what that ending was all about. Um, uh, Daniel mentioned Jurassic Park 3 earlier on. And I think it did come out in that year, which was kind of groovy. I didn't mind that film. Uh, and Van uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme had a movie come out called Replicant. Now, of course, when you think of Replicant, you think of Blade Runner straight away. Uh, and to a large degree, it's similar because instead of having an artificial person created of Jean-Claude, they actually did a clone version of him instead. And uh, he has a telepathic link back to his, his, his other self, which is the first time I think we've come across where clones of any description can telepathically link to their, their hosts or their, their original source, which is something different. But um, I thought the name replicant, you know, which is such a Blade Runner term, should be released. I thought, oh, that's interesting, because I had to look that up and go, hang on, is he actually a replicant or what? And it turns out he's a clone, so uh, there you go. Um, otherwise, there wasn't a great deal of other movies that came out that year, but uh, there you go. That's what I sort of picked out for the um, for the time being. So uh, there you go. Back to you, MPS. Well, there was a few other films that came out. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring came out. Oh, Harry yeah. I saw, I saw, yeah, 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 gotcha. Yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, a couple of animated films. Shrek came out. Monsters, Inc. Um, Pearl Harbor, which was a Matthew film mm. with a lot of people in, in that uh, that is now mm. famous. Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. Uh, the Mummy Returns, which is the sequel of uh, Brendan Fraser's The Mummy. And David Duchovny's movie um, come back in Evolution. Yeah, I did have Evolution listed, and I thought I just didn't mention it. Uh, you're right. Thank you, Daniel. It was Mark Wahlberg. Uh, very good. And a few people did actually like Ghosts of Mars. That's that's pretty groovy. There was a few Mars movies floating around at that time. I just thought the violence just sort of ruined it a little bit, but uh, each their own. So uh, there you go. Um, and, yeah. yeah, I didn't mention Lord of the Rings because I was, wasn't focusing on fantasy, but you are correct. That did come out that year as well. And Spider-Man, as Henge has got. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I think Spider-Man you might find is 2002 because I didn't find it come up, So, but I'll check that in a second. Uh, TV shows that came out that year were Alias with Jennifer Garner, uh, Smallville, Enterprise, uh, the animated Justice League series, Mutant X, Black Scorpion, which only lasted one very small season. Uh, I think the first version of The Tick came out as well that year. Witchblade. Uh, the Lone Gunman, which was the, I believe, the only X-Files spin-off series, which only lasted mm. about four or five episodes. It wasn't very long at all. No, it was about 12. Was it 12? I, I didn't think I didn't think we saw that many over here, so maybe that's why. Uh, Zoids, the famous 80s uh, action figures that you wound up and were robotic, they, that series came out. And good old Russell Coit's All Aussie Adventures came out for the first time in that year. Uh, and going on on the death theme of this particular year, uh, in terms of sport, Don Sir Donald Bradman uh, passed away. Uh, William Hanna from Hanna Barbera fame, he went as well. And the singer A Liar, uh, who uh, was very very short in her career, and uh, yeah, she left us very early. Uh, she did a film called uh, Romeo Must Die, and um, very good film. Her only sort of film appearance that I can recall. Um, I think she was in Queen of the Damned too, from memory. She may have been, yeah, yeah. Uh, so only a couple of sort of appearances. She was getting towards the acting side of things. One of her songs is brilliant, but, yeah, gone too soon. So, And that's it from me. Very good. All right, it's 9.30. It's time for us to buzz off, even though we've still got oh, actually people leaving us already, so they've had enough nerdy talk from us. So we're going to buzz off. Any final words before we go, lads? No. Not really. Very good. In that case, in, in the interim, we'll see you next week for our Star Wars talk, if not in two weeks' time, and uh, make sure you stay safe and, uh, very importantly, stay nerdy. Okay, take care. Bye. See you. See you.